Hey friends, it's Kathy from Kathy's Country Life. Welcome back. On today's video, I'm going to be making my favorite bread recipe, sandwich bread recipe. And I'm going to do it two different ways. Um, and you can pick which way you like. There's really three ways that you can make this bread. Um, the two ways that I'm going to use is I'm going to build my dough using my electric bread maker machine and also my KitchenAid stand mixer with the dough hook. I've really fallen in love with my bread maker machine. Not so much as baking the bread in there, but getting my dough ready and risen in here. It's basically you dump your ingredients in, you turn it on a dough setting, and it kneads it, and it lets it rise um, for your initial rise in here, and it's basically hands off. Um, I've always done, before getting the bread machine, bread in my KitchenAid mixer with the, the kneading dough. And um, I, I'm sure a lot of you that have an electric stand mixer with the kneading dough has probably made bread that way too. The only way that I have not made, and I may have one time, I don't remember, but is um, kneading, mixing and kneading the dough by hand. Um, I didn't get into the bread making game early on where those were your options um, to make bread. Um, the, the stand mixers were already available with the bread hook and so when I was learning to make bread this was how I did it to make it easier on me. And the bread machine to me makes it even easier. So I'm going to do two loaves today, one with my KitchenAid stand mixer and one with my bread maker. This is just the standard um, loaf bread recipe that I use. Um, I really like, I'm going to make them two ways. I'm going to make it in a Pullman pan. And if you have never used a Pullman pan before, I highly recommend it for like um, sandwich bread making. It, um, it is like perfectly rectangle. And then it has a lid that you slide on here and you bake it with the lid on. And what this does is it causes the bread not to rise above the bread pan. It keeps it compacted down into a uniform shape, um, but the bread is still very soft and fluffy. You just don't get that extra rise um, where it could be, you know, a little, not dry crumbly, but have a bigger crumb to it and could um, ease, can fall apart. It don't, it's not as sturdy, sturdy of a sandwich bread making it in a regular loaf pan. So the Pullman pan, I really, really do enjoy um, making sandwich bread in. And then I'm gonna do one loaf in the Pullman pan and then one loaf in just a standard um, bread loaf pan, which this is also my meatloaf pan too. <laughs> So we're going to get started and I'm going to show you my recipe and we're going to add them both in um, to my different machines here and show you how it's done. Okay, this is my bread machine. It is a, what is it, a Hamilton Beach. I got this at Walmart on sale a while back. Um, but it has all kind of different settings for whatever, if you're making your bread in here, of course it'll bake it. Um, I am usually always using the number eight, which is dough, and this just mixes, kneaded, kneads, and gives it its first initial rise while in this machine. Um, inside, you have this pan that is also removable, um, and it's got a paddle down here, which does the mixing and the kneading for you. And then, this is my KitchenAid with a dough hook. Okay. So I'm going to start adding um, the ingredients. I'm using the exact same ingredients in each machine, and we'll get started doing that. And I've got, this is the, <clears throat> the little booklet that came with my bread machine. It's, it's got flour on it. It's got sticky stuff, and I think some honey or sugar on it. And um, I just keep this in my junk drawer here in the kitchen, and I've just written on here what recipe that I like on here. But I'll list it below in the description box the recipe that I'm actually using. It's a combination of different ones. Okay, I'm going to start out with one and a half cups of warm water in each. 
Now a bread machine, I think it's pretty standard that you put wet ingredients first and then your dry ingredients on top, which would be like your flours, and then your yeast on top of that. That is the standard way to do it, but me just doing it the way I'm doing it has worked well. So then we've got two teaspoons of yeast. I'm using active dry yeast, a bread machine. If you're baking it in here, it um, really does better with an instant yeast because um, it's only going to do one rise and then bake. Um, but this is going to rise twice for me after it's going to rise once in here and then when I take it out it's going to rise again. Um, so I'm, I feel good. I use active dry yeast in the bread machine a lot when I'm not baking the bread in here. So that's two teaspoons of yeast. And then we're gonna do two teaspoons of sugar. And if you plan, if you want to bake your bread in here, you can do these first three ingredients, like I said, and just let it sit and proof some get the proofing out of the way where you can start seeing where it starts bubbling up some. Okay, and then I'm going to add four cups of flour. Now, I am using bread flour for this, but I started out and I still use all-purpose flour. It does just as well. I just happened to pick up um, a bag of the bread flour but like I said especially if you're starting out making bread use the all-purpose flour it's fine I haven't started into like artisanal breads and multi-grain breads yet um, which I think I will use bread flour when I start experimenting with those but just for a plain sandwich bread or for a yeast roll or anything like that all-purpose does fine and and bread flour does a smidge better but you can't really tell the difference so we're going to go with four cups in each three I have to concentrate because I will lose count Four. Oops, there we go. I'm making a mess already. One teaspoon of salt. I don't like to put salt in directly with the yeast. They say the salt can kind of die off the yeast. So I try not to um, get the salt in with the yeast just yet. Okay, that's one teaspoon of salt. Then I'm going to do two tablespoons of dried milk. This is just the instant dry milk. Tablespoons of softened butter. Okay, 
and that's it. So, on the bread machine, I'm going to close the lid, and I'm going to select on my machine, the, I just wanted to make the dough for me, is number 8. So I'm going to go to cycle 8 and hit start. This takes an hour and 30 minutes, but remember it needs it, mixes, it needs it, and it gives it its, its first initial hour rise. And then for this, I'm going to get this up and I'm going to get it going and let this knead for five minutes. Okay, this is done. Feels like Play-Doh. I'm just gonna kinda, and it's not sticking to my fingers, that's what you want. You do not want it to like stick to your fingers. bottom of this pan, this bowl that I used to mix it in. I'm just smoothing it out. Get it all oiled up so that the top doesn't dry out. I'm going to cover it with a clean dishcloth. And we're going to let this rise for an hour. Now here in my bread machine, sometimes you do need to get in here and scrape down the sides so that everything gets incorporated. That's the only drawback on this is it's not completely hands off. You do need to get in here and like scrape down and just make sure especially in the corner, some um, flour can stick. And you just want to make sure that that's all incorporated in, but that's usually just a one-time thing, like I'm doing now. And we'll let that continue on. Okay, it's been one hour. Ta-da! It really puffed up. Okay, we're gonna work this. I'm going to roll this out into like a rectangle. And this is the exact same step I'll do for the Pullman pan too. This one's going to go into the loaf pan. I'm just going to take this and I'm going to start rolling it up tightly. And 
and we're going to pinch the edge together. For the end, I'm just shoving that in there and pinching it shut. And it's going to go in to my loaf pan, seam side down. And this is going to be a big loaf. Okay, I'm going to cover this and let this rise for about 30 minutes. We've got about 20 minutes left on our bread machine. It's doing its initial rise right now. We've got about 20 minutes left on this, so um, I'm a little bit off on the time. But by the time that I'm putting my loaf pan in the oven, this will be ready to get prepared and put into the Pullman pan. So stay tuned. This is done. See how much that it has risen? Okay, we're going to get ready for this dough to go in the Pullman pan. Now, when you're using the bread machine, the paddle down here will sometimes come out with your dough, so you just kind of have to dig it out. But this time it stayed here. We're going to do the same thing that we did with the other one. Just kind of going to work it here and <clears throat> roll it out. Into a rectangle. To me, um, the dough made in the bread machine feels smoother, looks smoother. And you sit here and you just work it till you get it into a pretty good size rectangle. And I use my pan to kind of judge. It's wide enough. Gonna do the same thing, roll it up. <laughs> Stay. Pinch your seams. Tuck in your ends. And I have, you don't need to use cooking spray um, in your pans. I have just lightly coated it with some shortening. These are non-stick pans, but you just never know. You don't want your beautiful bread to come out sticky. So we're just going to tuck this in. And then I'm going to work this down in here. Get it into the corners.
get it pretty even. Okay. And then I'm going to put the lid on. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. We're going to just let it, I'm going to put it on my stove top um, and let it rise for 30 minutes. And now our other one should be risen enough and we can put it in the oven. But I'll bring it over here and show you. Yes, it's got a nice rise on it. So I'm putting this in. A, I bake it on 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. So I'm going to stick this one in. And when the one in the pulling pan rises for another 30 minutes, I'll show you what it looks like before I put it in the oven. And then I'll see you back um, when they're both done. I'm so excited. You're going to love it. Okay. This is the bread out of the loaf pan. It took about 45 minutes, um, and I would I checked it with the internal temperature, and once it reached 190, you know that it's done. And I've taken it out. We're going to let it cool. I'm going to give it a rub down of butter. This will keep the outside soft and delicious. Yummy. Okay, the one in the other pan is in the oven and it's got about 17 minutes. And so when I bring that out, I will bring you back. And just to show you, it um, is huge. It's a big old loaf, it's kind of lopsided. This might have been a little bit too much dough for that bread pan. But once it cools off, it'll be delicious. I'm going to actually send this over to my in-laws, but we'll cut into it so you can see the crumb when it cools off. Okay, friends, I just took the Pullman pan out. Show you what it looks like. If we can get this dumped out because it's hot. Whew. Isn't that pretty? Let me check it, make sure it's done. It's a little lot. It is done. So we're going to sit here and let this cool. Ooh. Gosh, that's hot. This one's cooling off nicely. And see how uniform it is? It's just like a, just a perfect skinny bread loaf. Compact. It's not all puffed up like this one. This one's got a nicer color to it. But I'm going to do the same thing with this one. And just with my clean hands, I'm going to Souse this down in some butter. Whew, that's hot. Mm, mm, mm. Hot, 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 hot. Mm. Mm. Gosh. <laughs> going to let these sit and cool off because you don't ever cut into bread it's as tempting as it is you do not cut into it while it's hot you want to let it calm down some and set and then we'll come back and I'm gonna slice into both of these and show you what they look like okay friends this one is cooled off enough that we can give it a slice and
Get down, cat. What that is. Oh, it's not, it's not anything, it's just a little tough spot. But there it is. I don't like end pieces. I'm gonna cut me another piece and slather some butter on it and see how that tastes. This is my little handy dandy bread slicer I got off of Amazon. It's made out of bamboo. Well, and it ain't doing too well. It's still a little soft to be cutting, but there's nothing better than warm bread with some butter slathered on it. Mmm. Mmm. That is delicious. It has a great chew on it. Mm. That is delicious. Let me see if I can straighten this up a little bit. There we go. soft and it has such a great flavor to it. Mmm. That is so good. Alright, I'm going to get the other one. I have a little fan on it that I had blowing on it to kind of cool it off faster. But this is delicious. Mmm. 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 Okay. Hang on. Okay. And here's the one that was made in the Pullman pan. It's crustless. That's one of the benefits of the Pullman pan is that it is crustless. I'll smear a little butter on this one. Oh yeah. I like the texture of the one made in the Pullman pan better. It's a little bit more compacted, but it's so, it's super soft. Mmm. So, if you've not ever tried the Pullman Pam, I would give it a try for sure. I got mine off of Amazon. Matter of fact, mine came in a two pack. And they're not very expensive. I'll link the one that I have um, down below in the description box. Mm. There's nothing better than warm bread and butter. Fresh out of the oven. Mm. It's so soft. This is so soft and yummy. But don't get me wrong, the one that you make traditionally in the loaf pan is soft too and it's yummy. But I like this one. I like the form that it makes. I like that it's crustless. And I like the texture better in a Pullman pan. Um, I can tell no difference between making it in my bread machine or on um, my stand mixer. The recipe tastes exactly the same. Um, the bread maker is a little bit more hands off. You just let it go. You don't have to worry about getting it out, shaping it up, putting it back in a bowl to rise for an hour. It does all that for you. It's a little bit um, 
more time consuming. The loaf bread was from the KitchenAid's mixer was ready to bake about 30 minutes prior to the Pullman pan one. Um, but when I put it in my bread machine and put it on the dough setting and just let it go for an hour and 30 minutes, I can do other stuff. I can be doing other stuff. I can, you know, do a couple of loads of laundry. I can be unloading my dishwasher, loading my dishwasher, sweeping for whatever. I don't, you know, I can just set it and forget it and go about my day. So guys, I hope that you um, try this recipe out. Um, either way, however you make your bread, it is a delicious bread. Um, and thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. Bye.